Hi friends, welcome to HTL Lectures. Let us continue with our CMA Foundation Economics. For today's class, I will be taking lectures on demand, law of demand, why demand curves slopes downward, and exemptions to law of demand. These four topics will be covered in today's lecture. What is demand? Demand includes two things: the purchasing power and the willingness to pay the price. When you have the purchasing power to buy a particular product and at the same time with the purchasing power you are also willing to that buy that product means you have demand for a particular product. If I have the ability to buy apple it will never mean that I have demand for it. Mere ability will not make my demand but with that ability I should be willing to buy the product. With that purchasing power I should be willing to buy that product then only I can say that there is a demand for this uh, particular product that means in economics we can say that demand means the desire backed by purchasing power and willing to pay the price and what is law of demand law of demand states that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded that means when the price increases quantity demanded decreases when price increases quantity decreases there is an inverse relationship and in the opposite side when the price decreases quantity increases this is what the law of demand states and this will happen when all the other things remain constant other things means other determinants there are many determinants in demand one is price second is the price of substitute goods and uh, complementary goods price of complementary goods income of the consumer taste and preference of the consumer all these are determinants those det determine the demand so when you study the law of demand you are not considering any other de uh, determinants except the price demand is moving in opposite direction of price when all the other things remains constant that means well, if suppose the price has been increased suppose the price has been increased to a higher level so generally what should happen in demand the demand should be reducing because the price has been increased but at the same time when the price has been increased my income also increases means maybe the demand will not be changing or demand may be increased demand and price may be moving in the upward direction equal direction why because there are change in other determinants also so law of demand will not be considered when all the other things are also changed so we should state that it is constant we should know that it is constant all the other determinants should be constant and at the constant time price should be moving then the quantity will be in opposite direction that is what the law of demand states that and it is expressed mathematically in dx is equal to function of px that means demand for the product x here x is the product and demand for the product x is equal to the function of price of x demand for the x is depending on the function the movement of price of x when the price of x has been moving the demand will be moving. that is what the law of demand states and this law of demand can be expressed either in tabular form or in graphical form when you express in tabular form you will say that it is a demand schedule demand schedule is a schedule or table showing the inverse relationship between price and quantity demand this is what the demand schedule is this shows the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded you can see when the price is decreasing quantity demanded is increasing right so this is what the uh, demand schedule shows and demand schedule can be expressed either in individual form in market form individual form means when there is a b and c in the market and you consider only the demand for a means you will take individual demand schedule and if you want to express the demand schedule of a plus b plus c that means market uh, all consumers in the market then you have to prepare market demand schedule you can see that this is market demand schedule where you have taken the demand for all the consumers in the market a plus b plus c that means uh, 100 plus 150 plus 50 is equal to this calculation is wrong you can take any other 
350 plus 400 plus 150 is equal to 900. This calculation is wrong, so please don't consider this one. So you can see that when the price has been decreasing, quantity demanded has been increasing, you can see. Yes, okay. This is what the market demand schedule is. Market demand schedule is a summation of individual demand schedule. Okay, uh, I hope you understood. Now, the second way of expression is that uh, preparing a demand curve. Demand curve is a graphical representation of inverse relationship between uh, price and quantity demanded. The graphical representation of law of demand. That is what the demand curve is. Demand curve states the inverse relationship you can see. When the price is 5, you will buy 10 unit of a product. So in the product you can see. 10 unit of a product. And when the price has been increased to 3, you can see that you will so it decreased to C uh, to 3. You can see that you will buy more of the quantity demanded. You will increase your uh, demand from 10 to 30 when the price has been decreased. So, this is what the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded as per demand curve. So, it will be downward sloping. It will be downward sloping. And when the price is decreased, the quantity demanded has been increased. This is what uh, law of demand as per demand curve. Uh, this demand curve also you can express in market form. This is what the market form of demand curve. This is the demand for A. This is the demand for B. This is the demand for C. So when you add all the demand curve, you will get the market demand market demand curve of A plus B plus C. Uh, uh, when the uh, price is P, your demand for this product is Q, 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 Q. Price is same. And the same way uh, when the price is decreased, your quantity demanded will be increased. Yes. So this is what the law of demand states. Now we are going to see why the demand curve slopes downward. As you can see that demand curve is sloping downward from C to D and all. You can see that it is downward sloping. Why it is sloping downward or why there is an inverse relationship. First one is that because of law of diminishing marginal utility. As I have already said in my previous lecture, uh, law of diminishing marginal utility. When you buy more and more of a product, your demand for a particular product, that product will be decreased on each of the additional unit right uh, for example if i buy a product more and more if i buy uh, chocolate more and more will my demand decrease yes that is what the law of diminishing marginal utility states when you have you buy more and more of a particular product your demand your utility will start reduce so in order to increase the demand what you can do you can reduce the price so when the price is reduced the more and more consumers will attract to that product and they will consume more of the demand so in this way we, in order to increase the demand because of the law of diminishing marginal utility uh, when you consume more and more and more and more of a particular product your demand gradually start reduced so in order to retain or increase the demand you have to reduce the price so the price should price will be reduced price will be reduced in order to increase the quantity demanded right this is what uh, law of diminishing marginal utility state you can see according to the law of diminishing marginal utility when the quantity of good is more than the marginal utility of the consumer the commodity will be less so the consumer demands more goods when the price is less that is why the demand curve slopes downward from left to right hope you understood and second one is substitution effect what is substitution effect? Mango. I am buying mango. Right? So, and I see that when price has been decreased, quantity demanded will be increased. So, how it is? 
through substitution effect. Through substitution effect, when the price has been decreased, quantity demanded should be increased. That is what the law of demand states. That. Suppose the price of mango has been reduced. Price of mango has been reduced. So, when the price of mango has been, and uh, this product is orange, suppose orange this product is orange and the price is still in p quantity is still q so when the price of a substitute not changed in the market it means there is no change no change in the market and the price of our product the mango has been changed and the price has been decreased will the person who are buying orange will shift to buy mango yes I say that yes because the price of mango has become relatively cheaper than orange right so in this way we can say that the demand from orange the product who the person who are buying the orange will also come to buy mango so the demand for that product will be increased this is how the substitution effect states the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded when you your price has been reduced the demand for that product will be increased because the substitute product is much higher in value so our product will get more market in the same way when the price is increased when the price is increased your quantity demand will be decreased because the orange is cheaper than mango so in this same way the demand will be reduced and this party will shift to orange this is uh, vice versa you can say so this is what the substitution effect now income effect what is income effect here you have to understand what is a income and real income in economics you can divide income into two income into two real income and nominal income nominal income real income and nominal income so I will state the difference between real income and nominal income. Suppose I am getting 10,000 as salary. This is an income, right? In economics, what we call for this 10,000 rupees? Is it real income or nominal income? The income which I get income which a consumer get is known as nominal income this is nominal income what the income I actually get is a nominal income so what is real income suppose as I said in the I get 10,000 as my income right I get 10,000 as my income, nominal income. So, I use this 10,000 for purchasing X product, product X. Suppose the price of X, price of X has been reduced. Suppose the price of X has been reduced. Will I be able to buy product X more? yes because the price of x has been reduced so when the price of x has been reduced i will not have to i shall not have to spend my, all my 10000 rupees in order to buy the previous quantity suppose in the previous quantity i buy 10 kg of x when the price has been re uh, reduced, I can buy this 10 kg with 9000 rupees. 9000 rupees, right? So I have a savings. I have a savings of 1000 rupees. Is there any change in income of mine? No, I am getting the same salary, 
as 10,000 before. But here I get a savings because of a change in price. There is a thousand increase in my income. This is an income, but it is not nominal income. This is called as real income. Real income. This is what the real income. Real income is an income which you get as a benefit of other factors other than increase in your salary or income. You you don't have you doesn't have anything to do with this. This is a market situation where your income has been increased. When the price has been reduced for a particular product and you are buying that product, then the demand for that product will be increased because your real income is increasing. Here, your real income has been increased to thousand rupees. So this thousand rupees you can additionally use for buying the same product. Now you are buying ten quantity ten kg for. 9000 rupees so you can buy more than 10 kg more than 10 kg for 10000 rupees so your drilling has been increased so demand quantity demanded has been increased with decrease in price because of your increase in real income i hope you understood what is real income is this is what the income effect states income effect states that when the price of a commodity has been reduced your real income will be increased your real income will be increased so you can use that real income for purchasing more and more of quantity demanded so when the price is decreased your real income has been increased so this real income can be used to buy more quantity of that product so in this way you can say that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded and the next determinant the next thing that states the uh, downward sloping of demand curve is new buyers as i stated in the substitution effect when you decrease the price of a particular product the demand for that product will come from the new buyers because all the other buyers who are not buying previously who are not buying this product previously they will start buying this product so demand for that product will be increased due to decreasing price so this is what the new buyer States when the price of commodity decreases, new consumers are attracted to the commodity because when the price level becomes cheaper than before, so the demand will rise. And what happens to old buyers? As I said, for old buyers, you can consider the real income effect. For old buyers, what happens is that when the price of any anything decreases, old buyers purchase more goods than before, so the demand will be increased. That is why the demand curve slopes downward from left to right. This is what the reason why demand curve slopes downward. Hope you understood this area also. Now we are going to exemptions to law of demand. What is exemption to law of demand? Actually, the graph of demand curve is downward sloping. This is this shows the inverse relationship. But for some goods, this is not applicable. This is not applicable. In that case, the graph will be positive upward. That means when the price increases, quantity demanded also increases. There is a positive relationship between price and quantity demanded. This is what the exemption uh, demand curve. So, for uh, let's check for what are the products that uh, that will give this graph exemption uh, exceptional demand curve. First one, different paradox. Different paradox means necessary goods. In the case of necessary goods, law of demand cannot be operated. This is observed by British economist Robert Giffen. He observes in London the low paid workers purchase more of bread when its price rises. That is why the situation is known as Giffen paradox. There is a logic behind this. When will the price of necessary goods be increased? N is my necessary product. I am buying it 11 kg. Okay. And there is also some other products. This is not necessary, but I buy this as my uh, luxury or to uh, in order to comfort my uh, life. So this is C. This product is C. So I buy 5 kg of this product. Okay. So I state that in the Giffen paradox, it states that when the price of necessary goods is higher, you will demand more of that commodity because, because the comfort goods have gone higher than this. 
that means when the price of necessary goods is increased it is understood that comfort goods or luxurious goods price has gone much higher than this necessary goods necessary goods will, the price of necessary goods will only increase when there is increase in other superior products so the superior products has gone much higher price so the necessary products will be demanded more because now you will shift from c to n because you don't have much price to buy this 11 kg of necessary products right so you will uh, sacrifice this comfort product or superior products in order to buy the necessary products this is why the demand curve uh, this is what the uh, demand curve states the uh, positive relationship second one speculation speculation is a general word we use in share market the price of commodity might be increasing and it is expected to increase still further this is what the speculation concept is in speculative market when the price is increased maybe you will buy quantity demanded more because you are expecting the, that the price will increase much further tomorrow so even though there is an increase in price of today you will buy more of this commodity because you are expecting still further increase still further it is expected that it increases still further this is the reason why in speculation market even though the price is high you will buy suppose for yesterday the stock price was 80 rupees 80 rupees and today it has been increased to according to law of demand we should reduce our demand but in speculative market you are expecting that day after tomorrow it is going to be 82 so you will buy in 81 more in order to sell in 82 this is what the speculative market states this is a speculative market now conspicuous goods what is conspicuous goods conspicuous goods are of luxurious goods they project the status of a person and prestige of the consumer right? so suppose Lamborghini car is very cheaper in India that means you will get for 1 lakh or 2 lakh rupees will you buying that product or you will buy more uh, luxurious product like Porsche and all according to economics luxurious goods have value only if the price is high right so for expenses cars and demand diamonds and jewelries will have only demand when the price is high so even though the price is high you will buy that product more because it is a market status it is a status of a person it shows the status of a person so the price will make them more demand this is what the conspicuous goods says and share and speculative market we have already discussed uh, i think it is a duplication now bandwagon effect what is bandwagon effect bandwagon as a, uh, effect is a consumer's behavior for example if i need to buy a mobile what i do is that i will check the market demand i will check how many people buy this what are the features and what is the review of that product right so i am going based on the overall review in the market or most of the people accept that so i am accept, accepting it this is what the bandwagon effect is it is an effect in the economy where we go we follow a few persons or we follow a group of persons that is what bandwagon effect states here the consumer demand of a commodity is affected by the taste demand of a commodity is affected by the taste and preference of the social class our demand is affected by the social class if playing golf is fashionable among corporate executive the example is given golf fashionable among the corporate executive then if i am a corporate executive i will have the demand for that product golf right so this is what the bond wagon effect is bond wagon effect means it's a following concept we are following some few persons or we are following a group of people who actually have done this this is what bond wagon effect if somebody is doing i am also doing that is what bad bond wagon effect now the last one is illusion illusion means some people think that the quality of a particular product is increased when the price is increased what is your intention when you buy the brand product 
your intention is that your product can be used for more years and it will be of high quality and all right so this is what the illusion states the illusion states that if the price of such goods falls if the price of such goods falls then it feels that quality also deteriorates and they do not buy sometimes the consumer develop a false idea that high price goods have will have a better quality instead of low price goods this is what the illusion states so i hope you understood what is demand law of demand why demand curve slopes downward and exemptions to law of demand hope you all understood thank you thanks for watching